Hey, welcome back to The Dive. The Justice Department announced that they seized more than $3.6 billion in allegedly stolen cryptocurrency linked to the 2016 hack of Bitfinex. And our guest today is here to share his thoughts on the recent headlines, as well as January CPI, oil prices, and commodities. He's a senior commodity strategist at Bloomberg and one of our regulars here at The Dive. Mike McGlone's joining us today. But before we bring Mike on, if you could do me a quick favor before we start and go ahead and smash that subscribe button, that would be amazing. Hey Mike, welcome back to the show. Hi Cassandra, thanks for having me back. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us again. Okay, so lots of big news in the crypto world today. Let's start with the recovery of the crypto from the 2016 Bitfinex hack. What are your thoughts here? Oh, I think it's just a good example of all the naysayers who say it's used for criminals learning the facts of Bitcoin, and that is the feds love it. And this is what I learned when I read um, Digital Gold but almost five years ago, is that uh, you can track all the transactions and they got them. I think in some of the privacy coins and some of the other things we can use mixers, but it was, it's just good to hear for the evolution of the space into the mainstream, which to me is the main thing that's been happening. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, so Russia is also looking into moving to legalizing crypto as a currency less than a week after banning crypto mining. What do you think Russia is trying to achieve given the recent news? Well, I, that's kind of dicey because Russia is one person making decisions, and we know who that is. That's the Mr. Putin. Um, I hesitate to use the word dictator, but as a fact, he has been dictating. Um, and what's more dicey to me, the more significant thing out of Russia is, um, yeah, it actually might be best if they did what China did, <laughs> because it just shows they're falling further behind in the technical scheme. But if we mention Russia right now, the most significant subject in the entire world right now is them amassing troops on the border of the Ukraine and most likely potentially going to invade. I don't see how they don't invade now. We're at that point now when once you amass that kind of force and this point in history. And that to me is significant for all markets, most notably cryptos, commodities, and stocks. I can dig it into a little bit. And I'll just give you a little bit on that is I think this invasion is going to happen. I think it means risk assets go down, except for commodities go up. Bitcoin's in the mid middle of that, and Bitcoin eventually come out ahead. Mm -hmm. So if this does happen, President Biden said there would be no Nord Stream 2. How do you think that he would go about ensuring the controversial pipeline would not be used? And do you think the U.S. would have the power to just cancel the project? Well, don't underestimate the power of the U.S. I heard that once from a Canadian who said, <laughs> never underestimate the power of the IRS. Um, and I, I don't think, I think it's more the macro. What this would do is shift the global commodity um, structure to the major source of commodities now is the epicenter of incremental increasing commodity supply, and that's North America, including Canada. Energy and agriculture. We're, the North America is just crushing it with increasing supply based on more lower costs and, more, and um, elasticity of supply. The significance is it disrupts, it's really bad for Europe. It's great for the dollar, bad for Europe, bad for the dollar, uh, bad for the euro. And uh, it's, it really increases incentive for LNG and uh, natural gas exports from North America to Europe. The significance of that is there's still really not a lot of infrastructure for that, and that's picking up. And I'll leave you with this. When people get really bullish energy, I say, well, look at U.S. natural gas price at four bucks. It's the same price as 1996. That's for a good reason and rapidly increasing the supply in the back of technology. But what the most significant thing, even in cryptos, is is in Russia is a potential war, an invasion between some of the largest commodity exporters on the planet and what that does for, does for risk assets. So my take is that's gonna happen. It's gonna trigger a potential recession in the US, pressure stock prices lower. Um, initially, most the broad crypto market, but Bitcoin and Ethereum will come out ahead. So let's talk about the price movement of oil now. Some reports say indirect talks between the United States and Iran may revive a nuclear deal and could lead to the removal of sanctions on Iranian oil sales. What impact do you see this relationship having on the price of oil? 
Well, uh, Cassandra, I think the uh, the answer is quite obvious. If there's a removal of sanctions, more supply prices go down. The significance of oil right now is it's, I think, focused on it's doing a good job of prob- pricing in the prob- proper probability of um, – largest grain exporters on the planet, Ukraine. And crude oil's bid most notably because of that. And then I, so I look at it as that invasion, I think it's going to happen, unfortunately. And I, it's going to create a massive new world order. It's going to disrupt all assets and everything. Um, and, but f- that's what I think now the problem is crude oil. I think it's somewhat almost necessary for crude oil to stay, sustain these prices around $90 a barrel. Because if it doesn't, this elasticity of supply from North America, which has been the primary pressure factor on crude oil for at least the last decade, is accelerating. This year, at these prices, North American liquid fuel, the, um, the surplus, of liquid fuel in North America is, is heading towards 15%. And I say North America because it's U.S. and Canada. Oil sends up in Canada, shale down the U.S. That's what pressured them before. And now they have that higher price incentive. So I'm afraid that crude oil is very vulnerable if we don't have this war. The thing is, we have to rope in politics. The, the, the Democrats are very motivated, do everything they possibly can about inflation and gas prices, and crude oil is a primary place for that, which means they have to do something to increase supply. I hope it doesn't mean with Iran. I don't know how that's going to work out, but there's a lot they can do to increase production in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to your point, according to Jeff Curry, Global Head of Commodities Research at Goldman Sachs, all commodity markets are in the state of a shortage right now. How do you anticipate the commodity markets playing out? Well, I think the, the the risk is Jeff is a very good analyst. I'm a good big fan of Jeff's, but I think he looks more as an economist. I look at more as an ex-trader, and that is you're supposed to buy low, sell high. Prices are extremely high. Basically, corn in the U.S. is close to double the cost of production. Crude oil is closing on the double double the cost of production in the U.S., and that's probably Canada, too. So what we see here, I think, is more of a distortion by this potential major disruption in the world commodity order, just the overall world order of Russia invading Ukraine. I think that needs to be factored in most notably. And then, of course, we have the Olympics in China, and that's really distorting a lot of some of the miners and production of some of the metals. So um, I look at it like this. The market has reached extreme backwardation, which is usually not a good sign for prices, but it's sustainable if this war happens. What I think what's happening so far this year is commodities going up, stocks going down. That trend will widen if this war happens. And the problem is every day that goes by, I think the probability of that war or major conflict occurring is increasing, unfortunately. Mm, Scary stuff. Okay, so Mike, one more thing before we let you go here. The U.S. Labor Department is set to release January's CPI following a stronger than expected January jobs report. What are your expectations of the upcoming data and how do you think that the market will respond to it? Oh, PPI and CPI will be quite high. When you have crude oil rallying 20% in one month, that's a pretty good sign that PPI and CPI almost always go up in that month. And this is a quite the shocker month. So I think what's happening is the, the inflation measures will succumb to the base effect and head towards zero rather quickly, but they haven't peaked yet. The key thing, the key way to have that happen is this massive increase in virtually all risk assets from 2021 and before that to revert some. So to, for really the, the, the simplistic way for those levels to go lower is the normal base effect and for the massive rally in the equities and potentially stocks go down. The problem is if we have the war, it's the worst case scenario. Stocks go down, commodities stay high, the Fed has to keep tightening, it's the worst case for the equity market. So that's where the new case are in. But if you look at the history of levels these high in, in, in consumer price indexes, they never last long. And we have a lot of incentive. And they, they went up on a lot of artificial short-term reasons, and they're going to plunge at some point. That's assuming we don't get a war. That's where this is. Everything is predicated on this, you know, Mr. Putin amassing a pretty substantial invasion force on the border of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's a lot to think about. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Mike. Uh, It was a pleasure talking to you as normal. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow with the latest news and updates. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell before you leave.